a rare look inside the secret world of the KKK. For those of you who think burning crosses and hooded rallies are relics of the civil rights era, think again. Hate groups in America have doubled in the past decade, and it may surprise you who's among their ranks and what their agenda is inside the new KKK. Hansman, lay a face. Forward, march. In a forest grove not far from the nation's capital. For God. For God. For country. For country. A group of men and women gather. For race. For race. For clan. For clan. As the light fades, they enact a ritual over a century old, but as fresh and searing as the flame they ignite. Clansmen, the fiery cross. A cross on fire. They are known as the Invisible Empire for a reason. They thrive in secrecy, almost never permitting outsiders access. Who are they? I could be your neighbor. You don't know who I am. You could think the world of me, but yet, if you see me in this hood and knew who I were, your whole thoughts could change. Uh, I've been a fireman. Uh, I've been in the Navy. The people wearing these robes walk among us. If you want to be in the Klan, fight for the Klan. I fight for it seven days a week. Witness the Ku Klux Klan this summer White power. in Martinsville, White Virginia. Power. White power. White power. And in Tupelo, Mississippi, a couple of weeks ago, a similar scene. White White power. Power. Over the past four months, Nightline has been granted rare access to the resurgent Klan. Their rituals, their people, their message of racial segregation. If we do not protect our race and protect our people, they're going to destroy us. They're going to kill us. To get to the heart of it, we headed south to meet the Grand Dragon of the Mississippi White Knights of the KKK. The clavern made infamous in the film Mississippi Burning. You've already been told once, Nick. It's impossible not to think of what once happened here, the territory scarred by the battles of the civil rights era. A Klan bomb ripped apart Birmingham's 16th Street Baptist Church killing four children attending Bible class. So we're in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And just down here is the jail where Martin Luther King Jr. wrote the famous letter from a Birmingham jail. Along the way, we make a stop at the Southern Poverty Law Center, where Mark Potok and his colleagues have been fighting the KKK in courtrooms and classrooms for decades. Many of the Klan's people we've talked to say Barack Obama has been our single most effective recruiting tool in the last four or five years. Well, I think there's some truth to that. Uh, immediately after Obama was elected, uh, we saw two of the largest uh, hate websites in the country crash. Potok told us that by the late 80s, the Klan had dwindled to a few hundred. They now number closer to 6,000. He believes they can be very dangerous. Uh, is dangerous not so much because you know, a whole bunch of Klansmen get together in a room and plan to blow up a federal building uh, or to murder a thousand people with a bomb. So you know, it's these kind of lone wolf characters that get frustrated with their leaders that break away, you know, one day walk out of their house and start shooting. With that in mind, at a gas station outside of Tupelo, the Grand Dragon appeared. He is also known as Stephen Howard. 31 years old, he says he's an Iraq war veteran. He comes with a loaded pistol on his hip and tells me he's got serious PTSD. We agree to follow him to a remote location where cell phone service is spotty next to a trailer by the woods. They ask us not to photograph Howard's 11-year-old daughter, but she is there, as is his wife, Nicole, presiding over the food. Between eating and target practice, there's work to be done. Howard and his clan brothers are preparing this 16-foot cross. This is just the torches. We use the torches for the cross lightning itself. You have to wrap them and you have to put some white baling wire around them. Clansmen, behold the fiery cross. When we come back, the burning cross that's terrorized people for generations and the frightening message the clan is sending in the era of a black president. Barack Obama don't care about us. He don't care about America. 